That being said, let's talk a little bit about that draft because not only did they get the Galio, but also Lulu was so highly prioritized uh, and they were able to pick that one up pretty easily as well in conjunction. So uh, let's see if uh, Cloud9 can have as good of a draft on this red side or if CLG will switch it up a little bit. Oh. The Zac is pretty much the red side duty ban. Like yeah. You pretty much have to perm ban. Seems to be the case so far. Zac's only gotten like one-ish play in pro play so far. It's not much. Uh, CLG have reprised their role. They're still banning Elise Way themselves. They've now added Olaf to that list to get it away from contract. We'll see what else they do to try to take him down. Yeah, it's interesting that in order to kind of break that one up, they decide to add the Olaf to their list of contracts bans. I wonder if they're still going to, you know, prioritize the Lee Sin and, and pick Lee Sin away from contracts or uh, what they're going to really push him down to. Because we kind of talked about, you know, Dardock has a very big champion pool for, for a jungler uh, and has had, you know, success on so many different champions. Yeah. Uh, but Contracts is by no means one of those guys with a, a limited champion pool either. Yep, definitely knows what he's doing. We'll see what comes through in this one. Last few seconds for the first phase of bans to end. And Shen has been banned blue side yet again, so Cloud9 got to drop that ban. We'll see if they keep the Fiora ban from before. And it's going to be Kennen instead. Worth noting, actually, Kennen was entirely unpicked in the previous game and has been one of, if not the most prolific top laner in pro play so far this split. And Greg is going to be the early grab here for CLG. They really consider that to be a strong champion. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if it's still going to go with Darshan as well, or, or how how valid is the possible flex pick um, right now for, for Dardog? Because it's definitely a champion that he has you know, a decent amount of time in as well. Um, I feel like the... Uh, you know, threat of flexing it into the jungle is not quite that high. It's you know, very, very much more probably uh, in the top side. Mm -hmm. See if Ray wants to try and uh, run some sort of pushing into it. And meanwhile, Cloud9 really showing high priority on Varus here. And it's interesting because this is a sort of a more meta game point, but are they trying to show everyone they like Varus that TSM plays differently when they play on Saturday? No, I, think, I, I don't think so, but like we I've I've seen players do that before, like Rapid Star at All-Star 2014 or whatever. Like sometimes you have that as like if, the back of your mind. So right? if it if it's if it was a more obscure pick, like they're like picking you know, Twitch over or not even that, but like if it was a more obscure pick then maybe, but Varus is so popular anyway. Ooh. Yay! Ooh. Here we go. Zaya makes her North American debut oh. alongside Rip. <laughs> Oh, Name a more iconic duo. Oh my goodness. Playmaking, please. Oh, Rakan is such a fun support to watch. He actually feels like the Lee Sin of support to me mm -hmm. um, because he has so many dashes. Uh, and there are new combos still emerging with this guy uh, because he is so recent. Like, I've seen so many people, you know, talk about how quickly you can get off the. Uh, you know, uh, W into ultimates and for the instant charms and, and the yeah. the wombo combos you can set up with him. Um, I don't think, you know, his laning is the strongest, but we'll see how Sticks and Aphromoo can actually get through that lane phase sure. uh, versus uh, Sneaky and Smoothie. Last time, Sticks and Aphromoo had the Caitlyn Karma, which is superpower for bottom lane, mega pushing, and very easy to pull off lane phase, and they did have a CS lead. This time around, I'm really curious to see if they can have the same effectiveness against a Varus Lulu. Absolutely. Uh, which should be quite strong. Yeah, as Cloud9 have the same duo lane as previously here. And you're right, it's CLG with the, with the losing matchup as you illustrated before. Bans and picks still coming through. This time CLG will ban away Fiora. So both teams respect the champion as a viable, strong, pickable top laner. And it's CLG saying, you know what, Ray? You are not allowed to play this into our Gragas top, we assume. And mm -hmm. With the Lee Sin gone, we still have to wait to see what Dardock will play here. Yeah. I mean, everybody's always, you know, fingers crossed for Ray Riven to try and see that mm -hmm. one come out because he's been such a terror in solo queue. But uh, probably not going to be the case here. Uh, I think they want some, might want something a little bit more sturdy. Uh, Ivern, though, and Kha'Zix. So more of the jungle bands coming through. It looks like they, they are of the same opinion where the threat of a Gragas flex is very, very low yeah. uh, over to the jungle spot. Um, high priority that the, probably does stay on the top side. I wonder if she's allowed to be demoted to a much later ban here, but still removed from the options by CLG. Mm -hmm. Jensen as well actually has all of his options open. Um, I mean, all the champions that you, that you think of when Maurice you think of... Echo. Yeah, exactly. These very high damage, good scaling uh, mages for him in the mid lane where he can 
get a bunch of uh, power farm and and of course and Ray gets team the signature. Fights. Yeah, Ray gets the signature Jarvan. Now I do want to point out that last game CLG banned Jarvan even with the Galio already showing. So if they thought it was the Galio flex, that might be the reason. Or there's I guess the chance that Huhi or something or sorry that Jensen plays mid Jarvan randomly, but. I don't know. That's unlikely. Jarvan's I mean, almost definitely in top lane. Yeah, there definitely is the chance. Small chance, though. Um, I'm very curious to see if Ray does go. Um, he'll probably go with the grasp Jarvan top side that we've seen so much. You know, uh, max out the shield Connected. and go for those more effective trades. Okay, so the flex does come through. It uh, does come through. You know, by the jungler bands, that may have been an adding factor if they if they hadn't banned out both. Right, uh, pick an Ivern instead. I, exactly. Keep the Gragas. You know, but. It is going to be Force Tier or uh, Chosen anyway, and the Renekton into the Jarvan uh, should be favorable here for Darshan. Worth noting, actually, Renekton is in a slightly weaker state, I'd argue, right now in 7.10 because there's a lot of code work done on him that was reverted in 7.11, so some of his old cancels are actually deleted right now from the game. Cinder does come through as the mid laner here for Jensen. As you mentioned, all of his normal options are available to be picked up here. The trademark Ray Jarvan is in and Darshan gets Renekton. Yeah, and the Syndra into the Orianna here, you gotta be a little bit scared for who he is. Jensen is looking to be in his you know, regular shape that we do expect from him. Good performance in the in the first game on his Orianna. Mm -hmm. And now it's gonna be up to who he uh, to try and combat that. But I think most of the story is gonna be how does a professional Rakan Zyla yeah. Zyra, uh, Zyla. Lane, actually, mm -hmm. Zyra, uh, performed, yeah. <laughs> We've said Zyra so many times, and yeah, yeah uh, expect some mistakes from us over the course of the year with that champion, as Zyra is still a reasonably popular support pick as well, but we are ready to go into the second one. Cloud9, so far, a perfect split for them. Of course, they're headed off to face TSM tomorrow, but for now, it is off against Cloud9 uh, versus Counter Logic Gaming. Twisting words here, but against one of the other old guards here in North America, CLG thought that with Dardic it would be better. He said it's been a great environment for him. They're all hardworking. He's been very happy with the team so far as well. And Dardic did have, as the analyst has said, a very, very good first 10, 15 minutes in game one. Now on the Gragas instead of Lee Sin, we'll see what impact it can be. Fighters in the top lane, high impact junglers, high impact mid laners, and Zyra kind of the bot lane. Oh yeah, Gragas is also very capable of creating er early plays as well. Uh, I'm very curious to see where he does burn his first flash. Gonna have to wait a while for that one, though. <laughs> uh, so let's go over, actually, Rakan and Zaya, uh, Zaya yeah. because they do get those bonuses. My favorite bonus of running both of the duo is the increased range on the dash uh, for Rakan to yeah. Zaya. Yeah. It's actually a pretty significant, seemingly to me, increase in the range. So he it gets is. huge mobility, and there's possible not only for you know saving her, but big initiations followed up by escapes from him. Uh, yeah. Due to that increased range, you can cover several thousand distance by jumping to the Zai and then you know jumping on the Gragas afterwards mm -hmm. or something. And it's one of the things I really do like with Rakan is having someone else to dive in first. His follow-up engage is so good, so jumping onto Darshan or Dardok, and then hitting the ulti from there is super E big. into W into R is is such a good combo for me and such an easy one to pull off. Uh, very quick and long range engage. Um, the other ones are, of course, like, you know, the combined recall. That one's pretty cool. I actually like that one uh, quite a lot because your support can start the recall for you. You know, AD gets to farm the last two minions or whatever yep. and uh, saves you a bit of time. Yeah, it saves more time than like someone lanterning you out of the fountain on the way out. Like yeah. if there's a thresh or something and, you know, you, you get to walk less time. But either way, this is where we are. After we've got to start coin on Rakan for those who haven't followed the mid season updates. Uh, coin works differently now, it's not as passive. You've got to pick up was essentially Thresh Souls off of Dying Minions to get your gold. Yeah, and you have to be a bit closer to the minions. You know, you can't can't really, uh, you know, play super defensively far back. So yeah. uh, we'll see how Aphromoo does it picking those up. Rakan is very mobile, so definitely one of the easier ones, even if they are getting pressured in lane. And further talking about choices made here by Aphromoo, he is going to encourage the Colossus on Rakan. Both his W and R will apply the Keystone, but I've seen many different options. I've seen Thunderlords, I've seen Windspeakers, mm -hmm. uh, and he's going with the tankiest option with the Courage of the Colossus. That, to me, uh, is looking for some more playmaking here. Big shield when he does go in. But uh, Smoothie and Sneaky waste no time in going fairly aggressively. Stun at level one, no auto attack came out of Stixay. Uh, just got the Qs down, that was it. A little bit of damage there. And we can see who he and Jensen trading back and forth as well. This matchup should favor Jensen based on the champions. Yeah, and that kill pressure post level six for Syndra on Orianna is very big. 
I do expect Jensen to play that lane aggressively. So to me, that would require some, you know, jungler attention around the mid lane. Uh, maybe some drop off on wards or maybe some early passes. It looks like Contracts at least is going for uh, multi-camp clear here, not going for the quick level three into uh, proactive play, uh, clearing out the wolves as well before going for his blue buff. Meanwhile, pings go down onto Dardoch, so they're well aware he's over on the blue side and should not be surprised up there. See a lot of normal stuff right here. Doran Shield start actually for the Renekton into Jarvan is interesting. The Doran Shield start for Zaya completely normal based on the fact that it's a losing lane, so that is an option when you realize in champs like that you drafted a pretty weak 2 on 2 or 1 on 1. Shield will keep you alive a lot better. Yeah, I mean, the shield is absolutely massive right now. You get your extra potion, it's so cheap. Yeah. And a huge amount of sustain. Here goes Contracts. Down to invade on the red side. See if he'll actually go scout out the red. He does not. Just assumes, uh, as is very standard, that Krugs were left out of that early clear. Goes over to steal on the bottom side. Mm hmm. And with Dardoch pathing back back over to his red now, they might actually meet up. So here is the possible confrontation. Yeah. So Contract's going to finish off the Krugs no problem, get away with it onto the right-hand side. No wards see him. He also has no reason to assume that red is up because it's so standard. You know, you obviously are going to assume um, that the red uh, Raptors as well as red were cleared before Gragas transitioned over to the blue side. But... Right. Doesn't even uh, bother to check that, as soon as it is up. Remember, this is an Infernal Dragon as well, so as much as uh, it is important to see if mid lane is playing aggressive and if they're pushed up, uh, bottom lane also will determine a lot of this. And Cloud9's and bottom lane has the pressure here, so you'd expect Contracts to be able to make a play for this one. At around level 5, I think Lee Sin can solo an Infernal Drake reasonably easily. Let's see if you buy some long swords from them to make it happen. Knock gonna land there. Look at the damage over. They got the root of the side. And look at the damage output. They're gonna take him down. First blood to Zaya and Rakan in the bot lane. Dars, uh, Darduck was here as well. This was a, a thought out play where they set it up. They call a jungler support down as well uh, for uh, just the, you know, coming through the lane just in case Contracts was there. So they were even prepared for Contracts being around that bottom lane when they went aggressive. Uh, and it's good to see teams take that extra cautionary step. Well, we want to all in. We know we can pull off a 2v2 kill with Rakan Zara going all in with the Ignite. Uh, contracts here in mid lane. Don't want to go too low uh, low health under the turret. Um, but anyways, back to that preparation. Mm -hmm. um, take a look at this. You can Because you can see Dardoch in the lane. And his main presence there is if Contract is, is uh, you know in that bush in the river and pushes the duo back, uh, they can actually uh, retreat back to their Gragas, but yep. he's not even needed and just there for the extra support. It's there to look pretty. So CLG first blood in both of their games so far, and this is a ball that can de definitely take over. I think Jury's still out on exactly what role Zaya fills, but she seemed to have pretty good scaling so far. She is an Infinity Edge user. Mm -hmm. Essence Reaver start is actually pretty common, but should be going into a 70% crit build, and that means that Sixer should have a pretty good mid to late game as long as you can get the autos off. Yeah, she is incredibly hard uh, to dive if she times her ultimate well. You know, Jarvan, uh, while threatening, um, is actually pretty telegraphed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very telegraphed, in, in fact, and a yeah. uh, good size should be able to, if cooldown's available, um, be able to dodge out most of that damage for the dive. Uh, as well as Syndra ultimate, you know, you can use it on there. Looks, Looks like we might have a dive. Big stun is there, body slam, flash, Ray flashes back over the knock, a beautiful oh. execution! Ray gets out and had just enough mana to cast his skills. Absolutely sick escape there from Ray. Uh, I don't know if he counted the mana beforehand, but it is one of the worst feelings ever if you throw down the flag Q combo and you didn't have enough for the second part. Regardless, yeah. great flash to get the knock up and gain his distance for the escape. He gets two for one on Summoner Deal with the two for uh, two versus one yeah. in the top side. And Lots doesn't even have something. to give up more than the rest of this one wave of CS. Here we go, flashes to the opposite side, has his shield up, and able and, to get out. And Darkon had to flash there. If he got knocked up, he was dead to the mm -hmm. turret for sure. So he barely gets away from the CC and gets out of turret range. That was almost a kill for Ray instead. Yeah, definitely uh, impressive mechanics here so far from Ray and well fought out escape. Returning to the uh, Zaya point though, um, they were down in CS, so they were, as we expected, getting punished in CS as far as the actual laning uh, does go versus the, you know, Lulu Varus. But 
it's not that big a deal, especially having converted the first blood and the gold, uh, kill gold actually going over to stick. Sure. Blood. But as you mentioned, early gold and whatnot, contracts individually is up 450 over Dardoch just in farm. Neither have gotten ganks off, but contracts. Level 6, has a lot more gold, has a lot more farm. A lot of pressure now towards the mid lane. Ulti on a who he's going to look for the stun, going to land that there. Nice body block for Dardoch, buys a bit of time, and oh. he's going to get a shockwave, and it's just going to be the kill. Who he's already gone. Shockwave didn't get to deal damage there because they killed off who he first. So that was very close to almost getting a counter kill, but not able to have the timing there. Dardoch went for the interrupt, tried to stop Ray's damage for as long as he could. Still, Cloud9 able to pull it off, and they do get a kill back for themselves, and they're rushing for first turret gold. Uh, with three members here, they it's actually run out of minions, so Darshan still has the extra time on top side, but there are... Uh, I think Darshan they're hits aborting, it, actually. Yeah, they're aborting mission here and sending Ray back to the top side. Well, Darshan right now is running out of minions, so he's going to wait, I think, one more wave to do this as he slices away. And yeah, without Riku coming out of Jensen, it's up to Ray to stop the Renekton in the top side. All right, so Dardak was expecting the 2v2 here. As soon as they see Ray, he makes a beeline to stop the Jarvan from getting in range. And while he can delay it, it's not quite enough. So that shockwave, ult. yeah, uh, not able to complete there. And Dardak tried to ult Jarvan back into the turret afterwards, but unable to get a counter kill. Really good uh, kill onto Luhi though. Forced Cloud9, good conversion. Yeah. Farm lead, the kill. Jensen only got an assist, but it's still <laughs> gold in his pocket, and Cloud9 able to get a lot of pressure through their jungler and mid laner, mostly. Yeah, and remember, this is a no summoner Oriana down in CS, not just has been killed as well, versus Syndra. Like, it's a, it's a very scary place to be the Oriana at this moment. That's why he's trying to get vision around him. Ruby. Had been somewhat of a star for CLG last split, but this game looking a bit dark for him. And Contracts looking just waiting around in the wards. They know they took away control ward earlier. Doesn't find anything to do with his time. Out he goes. Darshan there will be knocked down first. Turret has some help from Dardoch. Quick knockup actually buys a bit of time, and they're going to be going for the stuns, going for the damage, and Ray actually has no way out anymore. Ult buys a bit of time, but it's not going to matter. Kill comes through. Now looking for the flash oh. kick. They're going to get him onto that one. Hoohee chunked a bit low. Here comes Rakan, hoping to save the day. Not going to find much. Finally pops the charm afterwards. Q actually did land, I believe, from Contracts. He triggered Thunderlords with it. Doesn't go for the follow, though. Top lane turret does fall in favor of CLG after that kill onto Ray. But it's actually Counter Logic Gaming with the gold lead here. Yeah, Aphromoo had... Uh enough time to get his W off and get out of range of the second activation. Here comes Dardoch uh, to try and get into position to hold the wave, I think, but maybe they go offensive. Nah, all right, just looking to hold that wave as the duo lane did rotate up. See what we get for that one. Not quite gonna land that one a six thing. Four shields come up from Aphromoo. Big double stun though for that one. The snipe as well for Sneaky finally joining into the game. And that mid turret, of course, very, very low. Man, yeah, good camp there from Cloud9 in the mid lane. They know it's a summonerless Orianna. Jensen is fed, play around him. Contracts has flash. He gets the good kick off, and then Jensen also with that classic Syndra ultimate. So you have more orbs, get your multi stuns. And it was actually really well timed too, because that's right when Afro arrived. Um, able to stop that one. But another look as you're talking about their kill onto Ray. He goes again for the knock up there onto Deshaun, combining with the escape. But you know, no flash it means that there's no way he's getting out of there. It's the R into flash for contracts. There's that multi stun we talked about. And uh, that was Aphromoo. He uses ultimate for the extra speed. Yeah. And then his W after to gain that extra range after it landed. So, too far. Yeah, he didn't ult to charm anyone in time to save Hookie, but probably had no way of getting him out regardless. Yeah, he was dead in the duration of the stun. I think Dardot got most of those Raptors there. I don't think Jensen stole him away. So, passing so far. And now here comes Contracts finally going for that. Inferno quick early in the game, later than I thought, but still has control bot lane to make it happen. And this is going to be a pretty meaningful pickup here for Cloud9, because even though... Oh, God, I can smite! Not going to get it in time. He did smite, but it was too early. The kill comes through, and now here comes the fight. Oh. Nice charm and a knock-up. Lots of damage here. They will not yet get Dardoch. Ray going into the back line, trying to pick off that kill. He's not going to get it. Finally, one for one as the kill comes through for Huhi. Half of staying alive in the back line as well. Darshan full rage in the front. Flash already burned here on this, and out goes Cloud9. Nice combo there from Aphromoo to lock up two, but even with that, 
Garlic was so low from the original skirmish there around the Drake that it's just a one for one play. All right, it's an assist here. It's the CLG dual lane who's been getting all the participation so far without dying. Nice chunk on a Hoovy. Jensen with the ulti, got to shield himself, and Hoovy stays alive as a result. Just barely, the 47 magic resist, enough to stay alive. Ooh, yeah, the flash being down again, though. Orianna is a prime target. We talked about Zyra with her ult or Zaya with her ultimate is already so difficult to dive, but she's got double summoner. So Z9 for the next fight are going to be looking to focus Fort on Hoovy. Dang, that is incredibly close there for Dardock. Uh, not able to get it. But then we get another look at, you know, after this combo into the Shockwave here, gonna get the very last bit of damage. Yeah, and you mentioned combos. I think what he did there was R into W. So when he reaches their charm, they can't flash away. Then the knockup comes through and it kind of guarantees the lockup. But yeah, it's it's incredibly quick. Yeah, you, you it doesn't maximize CC duration, but it's really, really reliable that way. And can't react to it. Yeah, it's pretty much instantaneous, and that's the combo he went for, and obviously will always trigger courage of the Colossus. I think he's just gonna keep the wave through the bot lane, still going for the Blade of the Ruin King build. Early Zerk Greaves on him. Essence Reaver done for Stixen. At this point, once you're at, at this sort of level with this item, Stix A, it's super trivial to wave clear on Zaya. You pretty much always one shot with any QE auto attack combo. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very easy to farm, easy to keep wave pressure, and Stix can kind of be left alone to do this. All right, so let's see what CLG can do with this uh, mid game gold lead, because they are down the Infernal Drake. But they do have the gold advantage currently. Array! Shockwave, the roots there as well, and that was overstepping. It's so easy. Q auto techie, the follow up from the Shockwave. Kill comes through on Array. Drawbacks here. You know, Ray getting heavily punished by early focus of ganks on the top side. They dive in, they pressure his turret. Uh, the Renekton pick really taking advantage Close there. Pass. Doesn't find anyone in range just yet. After he wants to look for the play in Darshan to the front side. Gonna find the stuns. Gonna look for the root. Gonna look for the damage. And yes, they take him down. Who he gets the kill credit. But everyone else put in the hard work. Mid lane turret likely to fall to CLG's credit. Incredible snowball here from CLG. Oh, they ran out of minions, and the bonus armor comes back for the turret. It yeah. will delay it. I think they might still be able to return to the siege. That's the case. Six A gonna actually save the mana in the cooldown. No, nope, does pull the feathers down this time around. This turret's gonna fall. With Jensen dead, there's really no defense to be had, and CLG gonna go 2 0 in turrets. Gold lead over 2,000. The mid lane is pretty weak for uh, for CLG as well, but man, this this is where they really want to take this pressure and get their deep vision. Uh, the next step is going to be crucial. Here comes Ray. You know he is going with the Tiamat early on Jarvan, and the only defense he really had is Ninja Tabby. Good ultimate there from Huki to get him into range, hold him up there, and buy Zaya enough time to get some feathers down for the pullback. Does not take a lot of time. Q auto attack E. It's about a half second until your target's rooted, and that shockwave was enough to get it. Well played by Stixay. And of course, Ray had no waves out. Flash was down, and he had EQ'd forwards. But still, good plays out of Kyle Lash Gaming. Blue buff gonna go to Jensen here on Cloud9. And oh, Red oh, Buff! Oh, Red Buff stole a contract. As soon as you said gonna go to him, I yeah. was like, oh, that Red Buff. Caster curse continues. <laughs> I suck at this game, and. It's okay, we move forward in this one. Blue buff not ideal on contracts. All right, completely different story this time around. Yeah. Even though, you know, Cloud9 did get that early infernal, Bilgi have been pretty, you know, working pretty well around this playmaking, right? Not only do they have Dardock, but incredible playmaking potential from Aphromoo on this Rakan. Let's see what they get for themselves here. Quick shutdown on a ward. Control ward is dead. Cena have a couple of deep wards. Double infernal, always going to be. Great to have. As you mentioned earlier, the champions have good stats for it. Looks like Dardic will keep the red buff. They had the chance to go for it, and they didn't want it, it seemed, or they were afraid of the fog of war. That's the ward control they had. Contract once again spotted. And, yep, 6A takes the kill on that one. No big deal there. It's also pretty interesting that, um, you know, the CS difference in Darshan versus Ray, you know, do the matchup as well as the extra, you know, jungler attention is kind of counterbalanced by the CS difference uh, between Jensen and Huhi due to their jungler focus and their matchup, which is advantageous the other way. However, the, it hasn't meant as much. You know, Jensen's advantage hasn't meant as much as Darshan's has. You know, Ray came into that fight fairly weak. He was not level 11, didn't have the extra ultimate, um, and it was fairly easy pickings. Um, whereas the baseline effectiveness there for the Orianna versus the Sintra has been uh, fairly similar, oh. aside from the skirmishes. 
Another bad smite out of Dardock, and now oh. he's going to be in the wrong spot of this one. The invade didn't go very well. Flash to stay alive, and that's going to be an easy pick up there. Sonic Wave. Dardock losing his ulti and his Flash for nothing. A failed invade. Got to be careful about how much gold you're giving back to, you know, Cloud9 at this point. Um, next Infernal is up in 10 uh, seconds here, and Dardock's going to be down. So uh, definitely up to CLG to defend Vision around this Infernal Drake as two Infernals over to Cloud9 would be a lot of scaling to worry about for later. And it looks like the attempt at moving in for Vision is, is starting to happen. Both teleports are ready, by the way. Yeah, not too snappy right now. Dardoch allowed time to respawn. They didn't try to rush it with him still dead. TPs were up for both top laners, so Cloud9 theoretically could have tried, but didn't. Ray gets one auto attack, and then Darshan says, get out of my lane. This Renekton certainly has won the matchup. And the choice to grab the Gragas wait for the Jarvan and then flex it out and take the Renekton for a better matchup has certainly paid off. Credit to Darshan, who has had, honestly, a bad last 12 months. Since MSI last year, he had been a fairly weak top laner, even by North American standards, which hasn't always been the best. And this time around, he's up against one of the better ones in the league. Ray is certainly one who's gained a lot of respect throughout the last six months. And Darshan winning the lane, doing well with his matchup, and being one of the reasons that CLG are winning right now. Infernal Drake is still available, and with that, you know, time bought for Dardox to respawn, they can move right in. Plenty of vision and should be able to even that one up. Yeah, not even a chance to defend it. No one's even trying. Cloud9 happy to give away control of the map. They had the scuttle crab, they knew it was happening, and that was all they were allowed to do. Means the total lead here is just 1,400 gold. Infernal Drake worth about that much in itself, to be honest, statistically anyway. And CLG okay. retain their lead. Cloud9 looking for the mid lane, though. Nine members gravitating this way. Here comes the teleport, Here too! Here comes the ulti and the shock wave, the combo! Oh, oh, and the two men lock up, not quite enough, though they can't go get the kills. But there's Sean looking for the front line, can't get the stuns, though. Still looking for somebody, does have flash, but no longer the stun charge. Cloud9 getting away with their life, but only barely. Oh, what a sexy combo, but nobody dies. Summoner spells only is the uh, advantage gained there. Yeah, who he actually kind of betrayed Dardock. I think the Shockwave stymied a little bit of the explosive cast knockback. They didn't go as far as I think they maybe should have. Sneaky, though, maybe gets trapped in this side of the lane. The Zaya pushes there. The wave will be cleared. And looks like it's not going to be Aphron looking for much. Yeah, 2v1 may be a possibility, but as soon as Smoothie arrives, plenty of defenses in place. Good counter jungle afterwards. So let's take another look at this, because Aphron will again. That was actually the R flash W gets both of them. But man, look how low contracts was. Actually Single one hit. Health. Wow, really, really tight stuff right there, but he gets away with it. About to be able to clear his jungle a bit more here and kind of catch up as far as XP is concerned, both level 11 here on this one. I do want to see if we see more aggressive builds out of these bruisers. Ray's known for going full damage all the time, but with Death Dance being a better item, with Ravenous Hydra being a bit stronger as well. Obviously, we're seeing clear Titanic out of Darshan, but will he go Death Dance? That answer probably no, but I don't think so. Yeah, I, Death Dance, I, while I like, I really like the, you know, the doubling the effectiveness of the passive and stuff like that, you have to be able to uh, put, out, uh, put out a lot of yeah uh, damage as well to make it effective. Renekton never really feels like he hits that break point that you're looking for with Death, yeah, Death Dance. So he'll likely go stone plate next item. Then this one is just a very efficient tank item overall. Darshan shoving in the wave, no major issues here, and Ray will just last hit under turret without too many issues. That's in back of the mid lane. One auto attack should kill the turret off. Make it two. There we go, close enough. Cloud9 actually keeping the game now under 1,000. How quickly can Stixa push this bottom turret? Because Cloud9 are rotating back down to the bottom side, and it looks like uh, it's not going to be very quick at all. So don't think CLG will get anything back on the other side of mid turret going down. Not too much right here. Still the fight in the top lane. Darshan, of course, has sustain with his Q. Doesn't use much for it yet. Wants to threaten to dive with an empowered stun, but no one's around to make that happen, so out he goes. No one roaming to kill Darshan. He does have a couple wards in this jungle. You can see if you check that northern minimap, there's three blue dots in that jungle to help make sure that Darshan can split push safely. But he is not getting any turret damage with this so far. And it looks like Ray is going Titanic Hydra himself. No surprise, of course, on a champion like Jarvan. But also the Ruby Crystal and Longsword mean here. 
Last outer turret standing here. They should make a very strong push to get this down during the recall. That's why Dardok's waiting around. He's just there to make sure that... Oh, Baron King's already from Cloud9, though. Ooh. They can use this bottom lane as a bit of a bait. Or maybe they were thinking CLG, actually, since they didn't have vision. Yeah, thought that CLG were actually while. down there. But it's for bot lane at this point. They've all revealed themselves. Only Darshan to the top side, so no one can get over there. Cloud9 can Baron Rush right now if they have the teammates. They have four. Darshan might have to sacrifice in order they to They have all five. Here. They're no one can reach the except Darshan. This is no chance of a smite steal. Darshan is going to pull off a miracle in CLG. Past 20 minutes, send four members bot lane and give a free Baron away. Great call by Cloud9, but here's a mistake from CLG all the same. Yeah. Uh, three was, you know, three was decent, but sending all four members down there to, to force it without having any vision on Cloud9 members. Just giving away the Baron for an outer turret here. See what they can do on back of it, though. Well, a lot of damage in the smoothie. As some of it gets the knockup, runs away with the bonus health. He's going to stay alive on this one. Contract's going to trade. And okay, CLG, get two turrets for the Baron. They got the map pressure to do that, at but least. But it sticks at, or a Sneaky, meanwhile, takes the top turret there with his Baron buff, so. Yeah. Which means that trade is definitely Cloud9 positive to sum up here. Three turrets fall, two towards CLG, one towards Cloud9. And of course, the Baron still better for the red team here. And we'll see, the game now only 300 apart, and Counter Legend Gaming had such a good start. They got first blood in the bot lane. They had uh, Darshan smashing top as well. That turned into first turret, I believe, in this game. And C9 have weathered the storm, withstood the pressure, and are now in a position to take over the game at 24 minutes. Bottom lane should definitely be the focus here. The outer turret is some very easy gold for them to get here to fight with. Jensen actually get a push up mid lane before they go for it. Damage on this turret is going to fall shortly. And down it goes. Three to four in turrets. Cloud nine now up 600 gold. And considering that team was down first blood in the beginning, they had been losing in gold most of this game. And Cloud nine once again in the mid late game turned the lead finally. Yeah, how quickly has it uh, swung back in Cloud nine's favor here? The Ocean Drake coming up in 15 seconds isn't as big as. Uh, possibly a third Infernal could have been, but Cloud9 are going to pressure and rotate up to the top side uh, to use this Baron buff for some more effective cash. Nope, Rage is going to be the only one here. And it's going to be quickly waved up by Darshan. And out they go. Sneaking out of the way towards what's assumed to be Infinity Edge third. Same for Stixay, who has himself gone Hurricane. Which is one of the Oh, there's the flash ball. They're going to get the shock. They're going to get the kill on a Sneaky. He's got no way out. Hurricane means nothing. The damage is there, and Afro's really made the plays. Yeah, I tell you, that long range Recon engage is absolutely insane. His flash is back up. Uh, enemy AD carry is back dead. Sneaky, not even any time to yeah. get off summoners of his own. Afro move with the very quick combo. No yeah. reaction time. I think that one felt possible potentially, but it's you, it's so you have <laughs> to you have to really respect and have played against the rock. He's in flash W not, range. Exactly, I must flash now. Exactly, that, and that seems insane. Right? I know. I, I that, agree. That range is a full screen. Yeah, it is. It, it's not easy. I think it is possible, but you're right. Afro played it well, and Sneaky, you can't really blame him. Sometimes there's just not enough time to react to the incoming spells. Jensen knows it best. Sometimes this happens that way. Cloud9 lose up a kill. A Drake goes over to CLG as a result. Well played, Aphromoo. And we're back to a pretty equal game as the Baron's going to time out. Cloud9 did not get much off that Baron. I mean, this is, this has been very back and forth. Uh, definitely the Baron helped out a lot for them, but CLG strike back with, again, another play. Here we go, Aphromoo. They pass him the ball. He moves up with the E. Yeah, all right. You're right. That's all possible. It's a full screen, <laughs> dude. All right, take it if, back. If I, we had, if, I take it back. If we had seen that replay and Sneaky flashes, you start flaming him immediately. You're like, what? <laughs> you <laughs> you're right. My bad. That is not on Sneaky. That's that's actually. I, see, I don't play with any good Rakans. I'm I'm a low like low diamond pleb. No one's that good in my lane. So. Uh, but now I'm going to bring it. I'm going to gain like four rates. There you go. Be great. Be the change you deserve. I'll show all the recons out. Let's take done. a look actually at the vision because, you know, vision is paramount. And when you're seeing these plays coming, when you're setting up for those team fights, uh, currently, pretty good control ward here. I think that CLG are well aware. C9 were just seen venturing into the river. They don't know where they are exactly, but yeah, know that they should play safe. 
Banshee's Veil down. That is a minor gain to be had for Cloud9. Of course, the Drake is gone. It will be for several minutes, so no neutrals to play for. But it means maybe Cloud9 can play for a bit of map control. Zardox still trying to get his farm. He is down a level under contract. Steals 10 gold away from right behind him. I love the emphasis on, you know, playmaking that really resurges when we don't have pure tank building top laners. You know, these are bruiser top laners, right? Um, and that just means that Aphromoo with the backline access that you can gain with that flash, uh, it really, really does change the face of the game when there's not just, you yeah. know, this full tank Galio or, you know, full tank Maokai or something standing on the front lines that you have to work through. And it, and it does feel fair as well when the top laner solo kills you. At least you spent 6,000 gold on damage <laughs> items. It's not just, well, I have Cinder Hulk in a Dead Man's Plate, and you still die when you're playing Zaya. So at least everyone can feel more fair about this one. But yeah, certainly Ray and Darshan can have a very big impact on this one. They can also die much faster. And with Infinity Edges both under 1,000 gold away for these bot lane marksmen, there can be some real damage coming out soon. I think the Cloud9 and also, as we went over, you know, earlier in the game, our, the tools that they have to kill off Stixe, to kill off Zaya, seem like it's a much, it's a much more difficult feat to pull off yeah. for the, you know, the lineup that Cloud9 have here, uh, as compared to Aphromoo, uh, able to get in there with the Orianna Ball for some very quick executions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only not super telegraphed important ability is the Contracts ulti. Yeah. Which even then, like, you see him coming yes, in. Yeah, he has to be able to pull off an insect yeah. or something. And, and unlike a flash or an arcane shift, I'm pretty sure you can Zaya ult during the quarter second cast animation of it. Right? The root doesn't prevent the R from being cast, which will then stop contract and distract. He's got to try again afterwards. And yeah, Stick say, provided he's playing well on zero ping, should have a pretty decent chance of getting away from the threats. Speaking of, Stick say is frontlining, but felt safe again because Zaya kind of gets to do that. Yeah, especially when Rakan's waiting in the back line. We talk about being able to use the E first into the W combos or into the flash mm -hmm. uh, combos can really take the enemy team by surprise. Especially, you're added extra survivability because Orianna shields on top of Rakan shield. Yep. Um, definitely can uh, be misleading if the AD carry is out front. And just now, Stixay, I believe, got enough gold for Infinity Edge. He can head back to base and buy that. There he goes. And Sneaky is actually at that money as well. And it's right as Baron Nash responds. So both these teams, you know for sure, Stixay and Sneaky said, I have IE. I'm, way more, I'm, I'm a lot more powerful now. And if they don't check the other guy has it as well, they won't realize how much more powerful the opposing marksman got. And those are going to be the major threats in this next team fight. Yeah. And the, so then once you, once you identify those as the major threats, you have to look at the defenses around those threats. You know, while Lulu is so good at protecting, you know, AD carries, he has to be very careful not to stand too close lest he get caught in the same engage that catches Sneaky. Yep. And as we've seen, it's been like half a second is all that they need to delete him if Lulu's not ready with both shields and ultimate. And Afros flashes back up, so that same play could be made. And we'll see. CLG have had some very good teamfight combos. The Gragas Ori Rakan combos certainly scary. They get the stun, damage on the contracts. They will not shockwave. They thought he could jump away, and he did. Excuse me. Mid lane, it's C9 clearing it second. CLG, you can see with that deep ward, can watch them clear this away. They see that Ray has burned the E. A little bit of damage comes out from Stixay. WQ, no autos. Ray still in the front lines. They're looking for the engage. Stixay. Playing with a tight leash. He's only got that one escape tool, just the ulti. He's got a flash otherwise. This is great. Everybody mid, even gold. Everyone won Infernal Drake. Let's get a team fight going. Five on five. Gonna land a stun on a contract. He's able to ward hop back away, but that's on cooldown now. 30 seconds of Mountain Drake. Baron Nasher is live. Mid lane again. Traded equally. No minions to play for. No turrets to push. Maddox gonna heal up inside his own jungle. No big deal. Both teams have some ward control over Baron. Neither one has actually swept it away perfectly, so that is not really Fog of War on either side. And this is where thinking ahead comes into play so big. With, with uh, so much of the gold and the Drake's equal right now, getting ahead with the vision uh, to get that you know, first couple of seconds in a team fight where you get free DPS on the enemy tank or you, know, you get that opportunity to jump onto the back line means everything here. You can see CL, uh, C9 here being very cautious as they're the ones who have lost this vision war. The playmaking potential from not only Aphromoo, but also Dardock with his flash available is definitely intense. 
He's the one. Ray's walking forward. He's going to find Darshan. Knockup goes on to the Gragas. There's the Polymorph. He's got no way out. The kick to make sure it happens. And Dardock picked off with the start. And you can see they use a bunch there to be able to get that because they know just one kill. Uh oh, Steel G looking for a counterplay though. I'm going to be there. They're going to land the knockup. The Shockwave is there as well. They picked him off immediately. Two for zero. And Ray can't kill a backline by himself. It's all the time they need as Darshan's able to do that cleanly as well in the 4v5. They picked up three already. Then the root on Ray. The chase is on with the red buff. He's got no way out. Oh, he's going to flash out. <laughs> All right, he's got that way out. I take it back. I continue to make wrong calls these team fights, but CLG oh, lose is Dardot, he though? And it was all a bamboozle. Oh, after who wants in? He can W forward. He's got Moby boots. He's going to find the knockout, but they've got all the tools you think they need to get him down with this one. But the rest of the team is still pushing in the mid lane. The mid inhibitor turret is dead. And as Ray leads him off in a goose chase, contracts can't survive the 1v2 oh. in the mid lane. So the inhibitor is going to fall as well. The soul laners of CLG take it down. And Ray will still fall here. He is going to die. And now it's a renewed one full minute of 5v4 for CLG. Ah, believe in yourself, Freak. You knew it all along. He had no way out. <laughs> I'm a soothsayer. All right, here we go. Does the Baron have a way out? All the vision's gonna get cleared out. I don't think there's any need to rush. Uh, so much true, true side has been set up that they could try and bait further people in, but they're going straight for it, burning it down. C9, no vision inside the pit. Got a little bit now. Control will turn off the wards consistently. If he lands the Q, explosive cast from Dardot can prevent the contract steal. He's going to instead go for the kill, and Sneaky is not what he thought he was. Down he goes in the beginning, and Darshan tanks on the CC and doesn't even care. Gargoyles don't play help with that one. Jensen ults the tank, doesn't get much. Two for zero CLG, and they're going to go back for mid lane as the ping, actually. Uh, mid lane already has the inhibitor down. But maybe so. they go Nexus turrets. The bot lane is dead. Ray's respawning now. No ult for Jensen. That's the play from CLG. Darshan TP's back in. They're looking to close it out now. All right, let's see if they can pull this one off. It is a bit risky, but looking for the play. They still have Shockwave. They still have Zaya ultimate. They still have Aphromu ultimate as well. Yep, and they're going for turret number one. It's going to fall shortly. Good by six. It gets away from the stun. There's the engage. They find the Shockwave. They get some of the damage. Darshan just barely staying alive. Feathers don't land much damage on a ray. Pops the stone plate, stays alive. Sneaky in nine. Smoothie's up now, yeah. And they're going to find another stun. They're going to get some damage down onto Dardock. And all that CLG got was the one turret, and in fact, they're a bit low on health now. Ocean Drake means a bit of regen, but Cloud9 have managed to keep their members alive. Ray has ulti, but no follow-up. And it means Cloud9 are back in the map. CLG a bit low, but they're regening with Ocean Drake. And they're going to go for a trap oh, right there. Oh, they're circling around. I can't wait to hear the end of that story. <laughs> Take a look at the replay. Uh, first, though, this was the kill. And they used so much. Syndra ultimate. Flash there from Contracts as well. That gave overconfidence here to Cloud9. They walk through, remember, still no vision into this team that has comboed them multiple times before. Here's the end of that story. It is C9 now burning down the Baron. Looking for the play, and it's going to be taken up. And it's Contracts who grabs it. C9 secure it. They're back into this one. Polymorph, oh the knock of the damage. Darshan is gone. The double shock of again means so much for the cat. Kill the back line, and Dardot can't do the damage. Ray will be picked off. So much damage does come out of Sixe, who is still holding onto his flash. This backline for CLG has remained so massive. Dardax looking for the slows here to screen them, but Afro got he pulls in contracts though and doesn't find much to do. The kick on a Huhi. He delivers himself the kill still. Contract makes it happen. Dardak finds something else. What were they doing? They sent Sticks a mid to try and like push down mid lane or something. He's going now to bottom lane. Contracts is so low. He's, He's got no way out. He's pretty much dead. Oh, that's pretty sick and doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> he shields himself, pops the W. Gonna die, go down in a blaze of glory. Well, it's a two for two, though, and the Baron was still picked up by Cloud9, and they kept the waves alive in mid, so no extra turrets fell. And they can get back out to that dragon. I think they're gonna take it while we're going in this replay. There it is, Contracts securing that smite in the face of Dardot, comboing it uh, with the Q there, and then the turn. The turn was good until Jensen and Sneaky, the two carries, both get hit by that shockwave. Nice placement from Huki. They both walk right onto it, and he was able to get a pretty good one there. Aphromu, though, goes over solo. Yeah. And Contracts, good punish, realizing that he no longer has the W to add to the escape. Woo. No way out of this one. Yeah, this is a super close game, and actually, it's Counter-Logic Gaming still up in gold this game because of all the damage they dealt in the mid lane. It's Barely. Yeah, it's 900 gold, but it's something. Baron buff still on for two minutes of, I believe, three members of Cloud9. They lost. Ray and Contract, but the Squishies still have it. It's kind of unfortunate because no split pushes have the Baron buff. Ray can't bring that somewhere else. 
Let's see what comes in next. Ooh. That's proof. Go, uh, stone plates do cart, uh, start to come through for all members of the front line. And look at who he's damaged there. That is a lot of damage. Carrying it mostly for CLG. Get that very nice shockwave that was on the back line as well. So this is not just damage output, right? It was damage output in critical areas. Even so, Cloud9 picked up the Baron. Uh, even though they won't get to use the buff too much, that's such a big takeaway and definitely saves their base, buys them a bunch of time. Yep. And the tank shredding items are now in for both these bot lane marksmen as well. Sneaky and Stixay both have their Lord Dominic's regards. And who he was still the big one, of course. He's got the Void Staff done. He's got a 10 stack Dark Seal. He either turns it into Magi's or he sells it for a Death Cap. Oh, Banshee's gone. And Dardock rooted in the face and just can't do anything. Jensen takes him down. One for zero so far. The fight continues. A nice knock over the back line. And Darshan's going to try to make it happen. They picked off one so far. He's very tanky. He doesn't do a lot of damage with the stone plate pop. But it's still more out of Stixley. The double kill for Jensen. But Stixley staying alive on this one. And it's three members alive versus three members alive on both sides. Afromu keeps pulling these fights back for CLG, even when they're down in numbers. Darshan has to be careful, though trying to chase down the stragglers, delay their recalls so they can't get back to defend the inhibitor. CLG want to retake that inhibitor if possible. He does delay another one of the recalls, but they can't get past Ray. They can't do it. Mid inhibitor is alive and they can't kill it, as you're mentioning here. So we stay about equal. Two kills picked up on both sides. The inhibitor's back up and it's <laughs> just 2,000 gold apart. Watch that fight again. This is a fun one. All right, so he gets off the Banshees, but no hesitation of the counter engage there. Sneaky lands his ultimate, and he gets caught by the shockwave. Then Aphromoo gets in there for the knock up. ripple knockup. So actually, this one, who he wasn't even set up by Aphromoo for his shockwave, who he got that shockwave first, yeah. and Aphromoo got the follow up. Regardless, though, a bunch of summoners burned again, yeah. and they're getting hard to keep track of for the teams in the game. When you're mm -hmm. having this many team fights, keep, keep, keeping track of the critical flashes. It's actually very difficult and uh, incredibly important as well. Yep. And it's kind of logic gaming. I mean, so many players are playing so well. Aphromoo with the insane engages. Who he getting them sometimes without Aphromoo? Just soloing people out with a shockwave. Stixay, huge KP, no deaths, and he even soloed Sneaky. Uh, well, cleaned up Sneaky, I should say, in that team fight. And then Cloud9, of course, getting similar situations out of them as well. You've seen Jensen consistently one-shot people. Kind of logic gaming, as you can see with that Baron power play. Keep in mind, you get 1,500 just for killing Baron itself. And so the fact that it's plus 750 means actually Counter-Logic Gaming did more with the fact that C9 had Baron than C9 did. And it, and it was a little bit expected as Cloud9 were the ones on the back foot, right? Their inhibitor was down. And yeah, it was sure. Definitely a comeback play, but yeah, you're right. It's just an indicator of how close uh, this has been. Regardless, we're approaching the six item uh, point of the game where yep. It really comes down to the fight setup. I mean, at that point, neutral objectives actually are more about the setup and more about can you turn to win the fight uh, than going for, you know, the smite fights or going for actually the last hits there on the neutral objective because, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter if you uh, are able to get Baron if four members die in the process. Regardless, we're actually going to have maybe a base race here. CLG faster though. They're already on to mid lane, or sorry, top lane tier two. That's going to fall immediately and it's suddenly Cloud9 forced to back up and play for this one. Yeah, they realize too late. They have to abort mission now and go back to defend, but CLG should be able to get another inhibitor turret here. Should be two turrets now as they stay. The rest of the team's going to be coming around. Jarvis blanking as well. This could be a 5v5 that Cloud9 could win. A lot of damage to the stick, say. The charm is there, but no follow-up on a Jensen shot. by finally lands. He gets away with the flash though. Into the front line, to the back line they go. Stick, they're trying to kite away, but he's still oh! stuck in the pit, but he gets the damage across two shut down already they've got the knockback out of sneaky it's three down and the back line stays alive well played by counter logic gaming smoothie cannot keep his base alive clg will make it happen the comeback the win comes through one to one the series will go and we will have a decider the back line the squishes of clg putting in so much work in the team fights and they close out the game oh baby game number three Aframu and Stixay pull out the new duo combo, constant playmaking from them, and in the end, the critical team fight. Shockwave lands, pulls them back in, but it's the re-engage where Stixay lands the huge ultimate into the W pullback and killed yep. off three members with the execute there. Yep. Absolutely critical.
And it's hard to know who to praise the most <laughs> because I think there were so many good plays and so many members of CLG. Cloud9 had the good and shot Cloud calls. Nine. Of course, I mean, this was honestly, I thought, a very well-played game on both sides. Cloud9 did a really good job getting the comeback. You could say there's mistakes that allowed that, and that's fair. The first Baron was a CLG mistake, and it was a Cloud9 capitalize. But you look at Stixay, unkilled the entire game, huge damage effort overall. I'm going to look at the graph itself for the damage done, and eh, who he still did more is the thing. That Even though Stixay looked super flashy, who he landed basically every shockwave, withstood a bad matchup, still made it happen, landed huge damage. Afro was getting super sick charm flash Ws in, just like so many great things happened. Darshan smashed the lane with the help of Dardock, and they got first turret from there. Yeah, remember, for everyone. remember, both the lanes were like the good matchup one. The good matchup also had jungle uh, pressure, so yep. it was you know top lane one way and mid lane the other way. Uh, definitely enjoyable. Can't wait for game number three. Gonna be a fun one. So now we've got our analyst standing by to break down that CLG game two win. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I can't wait for game three either, Kobe. But CLG here evening it up at one and one to give us that third game. But this one was rather close. CLG winning fights ahead in the gold while C9 is getting control of the map and taking the objectives. Ultimately, though, it comes down to one final team fight at the inhib in C9's base. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. A reminder of how the game finishes here in epic fashion. Yeah, just honestly a much better team fighting composition from CLG. But I like how Darshan keeps Ray out for long enough because he wants to go in. That actually stops him from getting right in there at the beginning with the body slam. And then you can see the peel back here with the ultimate from Zaya and the root backwards and just the cleanup really just well played from CLG. And I think Darshan played that correctly because a lot of the times your frontliner will go to the side, or sorry, Dardoch played that correctly. Darshan, Dardoch, they're on the same team now. And, anyway. and Darshan played Gragas exactly. last game. Exactly, so it's like, a little ah, bit confusing. And he did that <laughs> to Ray in the previous game. Exactly, but also earlier. solid ultimates by who he threw out the game multiple times, getting both Sneaky and Jensen in a shockwave as he did there in that final fight. Yeah. But we've got a lot to parse through here, so I'm gonna move us right along. Talking about champion select, a completely different look for the top laners this time around, going for two fighters as opposed to two tanks. And then you already mentioned the switch, or rather switch up of the junglers here with the Gragas this time for Dardoch, the Lee Sin for Contracts, and then we'll obviously get down to Zion Rakan. But first, let's talk about these top laners. Exactly. They didn't want a last pick for Jensen, so they ended up going for the Jarvan, and then it was the flex of the Gragas to jungle so they could have the Renekton. And they just smashed the top lane, like 30 CS up really early on in the game. Multiple ganks went towards that top side of the map to free up Darshan because the rest of them want to team fight. Renekton's kind of the odd man out in this team fighting composition, so you set him up for success to constantly keep Jarvan in a side lane and constantly put pressure, and then immediately from there, you're able to take those team fights, and I think that's what they were going for on CLG's side. All right, now let's talk about the two new faces in the NALCS. Zion Rakan, yeah. their debut. How did you feel Stixay and Aphromoo did with these two champions? I mean, did a meta preview, said these are the two guys I thought would bring it out. I mean, they're kind of dating now, I guess. So, like, <laughs> But I think that these two champions are really kind of undersold. I think that Zaya and Rakan are fantastic, especially when paired together. And Afro move on this playmaking champion is what I want to see from CLG. Last split, you went through the NA All Pro LCS team, and it was three people, not Afro move. It's going through Olay, Biofrost. You have Smoothie as number one. Afro move, not even the conversation. Now he's on a playmaker, and you're looking at plays like that where he's setting up his team, that's exactly what you want to see from this guy who was invisible in spring and could completely revitalize CLG. Yeah, even in game one, right? We talked about that first blood being a contribution of both Dardoch and Afro move roaming to make plays. But here we're seeing him showcase on a champion that is built to make plays. And then beyond that, you made the point to me throughout the game that even his item build suggested yeah. his uh, his desire to make plays, right? Looking for that speed up from the uh, Talisman of Ascension along with the Ruby side stuff. Yeah, for more frequency of having that speed increase, but just his willingness to dive in and the team being completely behind him. But also, I got to say, Stixe, very fast on this Zaya, able to set up a route from nothing with an auto queue immediately having his passive up. But just the follow-up here, that is a disgusting team fight that is over before it even starts with the shockwave combined with the entrance there from Afro Mu on the Rakan. Again, I, I'm surprised the game wasn't as close as it, as it was given the number of times that Huhi along with Afro Mu were getting that double combo on both carries from C9 squad. But that's where we have to talk about the macro play from these teams and where while you know CLG gets the victory here, there's a lot of learnings that they can take as a squad with a new jungler in here. You can't give up Baron.
Barons for free. Absolutely. Two Barons went over to Cloud9, and really, there's no excuse for that for Counter Logic Gaming, having Four enough of a lead that they did. And the fact that they're a team fighting comp, you want to be at Baron first and let them come to you. This is the actual play that got C9 back into the game. They clear out the bottom wave, then they back in vision, are out of vision, but both. Dardok and Huhi are coming down bottom to make a play on this bottom side. And you saw there with the vision, they had no idea. But Jensen actually takes a sweeper across the path that his bottom lane is now going to take in towards that side of Baron. So they have no idea here. They're, CLG are thinking they're going to make a four-man dive bottom. And then they're like, oh, wait, they back. Oh, where are they? Exactly. Yeah. And then they have no idea. They even ward in the tri brush to make sure that nobody's hanging out there. And then that's when they show and everybody on CLG starts panicking. Time to get this turret and get something for this because this Baron just gets shredded so quickly by Cloud9. And really, just great macro play there too because they called out that bottom lane to go back and then run that path. And that was beautifully played. Those are those clever plays that get you pressure in a game where you are behind. Yeah, multiple, multiple Barons going over to C9. However, the victory goes over to CLG. And again, the player that had the biggest impact in terms of creating that victory is Aphromo. He'll be receiving player of the game, who he honorable mention. Yeah. Because again, it was the two of them in combo very often getting those that ultimate off on the two carries in order to win the team. Yeah, Stixe really had a good game as well. Deathless on the Zaya, but Afromu with the bold playmaking there, getting so many summoner spells, so many team fights start off on the right foot. And I definitely think, like you said, who he with the follow up and some shockwaves himself that just decimated team fights did struggle in the early game with two early deaths, and it was the bottom lane that helped rescue it. And now I'm just excited because we have two different looks, right? We had the tank top lanes, kind of the C9 had the better team fight in game one, CLG had the better team fight in game two. I'm just curious to see what'll come out in game three. Our first series of the split is going to that third game. Meet us back here in a few minutes to see if C9 or CLG start off the summer with a bang. Don't touch that browser. Maybe we the mind games. Mind, mind games, games well in. Yeah. No, mind games. <laughs> got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Nako's gonna land there. Look at the damage over. They got the root of the side. And look at the damage output. They're gonna take him down. First blood to Zaya and Rakan in the bot lane. But they do have the gold advantage currently. Array! Shock with the roots there as well. And that was overstepping. Dragus, 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 Dragus. He's dead, he's dead, dead. Yeah, Where you fight? Where you fight now? Go, go, go. Ready? I'm going on Jetson. Yep. Okay, I'm right here, right here, right here. Yep, I'll take it. The charm is there, but no follow up. And Jensen shot by finally lands. He gets away with the flash, though. Into the front line, to the back line. They go. Sigrid trying to kite away, but he's still oh. stuck in the pit. But he gets the damage across, too. Shut down already. They've got the knockback out of Sneaky. It's three down, and the back line stays alive. The comeback, the win comes through. One to one, the series will go, and we will have a decider.